We're here at the edge of the citadel. The citadel is an area around the Reichstag which is shaped as a peninsula. So it's actually surrounded by water on three sides, making it a very strategic uh, location right next to Hitler's bunker. So this is actually sort of like the end game. And on the 28th of April 1945, it actually became the end game. Here in the early morning, uh, Zhukov and his army arrived from the north after having intense fighting around uh, Gesundbrunner bunkers and they arrived at the prize. Behind me you see uh, in the distance the Reichstag and this was the main prize. They were supposed to reach this main prize at the 25th of April, three days before. This was after all the birthday of Lenin and this would have been a very good gift for him on his uh, birthday celebration. However, three days later, the 28th of April 1945, in the early morning, it was D-Day for uh, the Russians. They knew they had to fight for everything it was worth and they did. They found the bridge semi-intact. The, the Nazis were unable to blow it up completely and they could, with minor repairs, make it functional again. So that meant their T-34s, uh, their tanks could cross it and go onto the area of uh, the Reichstag itself where they found heavy, heavy, heavy defense measures in the form of so pillboxes, machine gun fire, mortar fire and over 2,000 soldiers defending what was actually a symbolic building. The building itself, the Reichstag, was empty. I mean, we all know that uh, Hitler wasn't famous for his, uh, for his uh, parliamentarian system. No, he had a dictatorship. So the building itself had absolutely no purpose. It was even a maternity ward at some point. So these Russian soldiers, a whole army of 7,500 men, were now up against 2,500 of, 500 of Hitler's most fanatical defensive um, strike force. All right, there were some, uh, some SS members, there were some Wehrmacht members, lots of uh, Hitlerjugend, Hitler Volkssturm. It was a mishmash of whatever it had, but they were all very fanatical because they knew it was the end game. And it took them quite a bit before they could actually call this their uh, territory. We're here at the very end game of the Second World War. This is where Hitler had his Führer bunker. So we're standing actually right on top of it. And as you can see by this schematic, that it's actually a series of bunkers. We had a previous bunker, an older bunker that was built originally, but it was not deep enough and it was not deemed strong enough. So they uh, secretly built a new, bigger, stronger bunker. This is actually the part that is so-called the Führer bunker. This is actually where Hitler had his private quarters, he had his private uh, drawing room, his private meeting room. On April 30th, 1945, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Hitler committed suicide right here. There's a lot of controversy around the location of the bunker itself. And you can see this actually when you're at the site itself, that the schematics provided at the site are as much confusing as can be. Now if you look at the map right here, that one basic feature is missing. Usually you have a big red arrow saying where you are at and they don't have it. They don't want you to know because they actually flipped it 90 degrees so you cannot see comfortably where you are. But I can tell you where you are. You are right there. As you can see, the sign is right over there and everything around you here at this location has been orchestrated and architecturally designed in such a way that it actually disorients you and actually makes it virtually impossible to find out where Hitler's last resting place would have been. Well, the schematics tell us that at the end of the sidewalk is where the bunker would end. This is right about here. Then the emergency exit would come out of the ground right here and then eyewitness uh, accounts actually said that it was 7 to 12 meters from the emergency exit towards the last resting place of Hitler, which would bring us in 10 footsteps to this location, which is actually ironically a disabled parking space. Irony has it, the end of the Second World War, right here.
we're Volkspark Friedrichshain right now, and this beautiful uh, people's park, uh, because that is what Volkspark means, is, um, well, sort of like a nature retreat in the right in the middle of the city. This mountain behind me is not a mountain at all. It's a so-called Fluktuum, an old bunker with on top of that bunker, they had um, anti-aircraft guns. So big guns shooting up into the sky, trying to shoot down the flying fortresses of the United States Army. But after the war, they wanted to get rid of this big bunker, so they imploded it. The Russians raised it to the ground. This brings me back to the story at hand. The story of how Zhukov uh, won the Battle of Berlin that actually started 75 years ago to the day. Of course, he knew that when you attack the city head on, you will find the biggest resistance. So what he actually tried was go around the city and attack it from the north and from the west. But it doesn't mean that this eastern part of the city wasn't completely struck uh, by uh, Zhukov's might because he had these these, these uh, rockets that he fired by the thousands and these were notoriously in inaccurate so they fell down here on this part of the city all of the residential area of Friedrichshain has been raised to the ground and it came upon the women of Berlin to clean up the mess all the whilst being raped left and right they had to clean up this city brick for brick and carry these bricks here to this mountain until it became a mountain itself all the people around me enjoying the spring here in Berlin are completely oblivious to the fact that the women of Berlin built this mountain and not nature herself.